Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today, I'd like to share with you 10 patches for the Behringer MS-101 slash MS-1, as it will forever be called. It is, of course, now called the MS-1, officially the MS-1, but I have the MS-101 version because I was in there in the early days. But anyway, the awesome thing about these particular patches is that they're also going to be compatible with the Roland SH-101 and indeed the Roland SH-10A or whatever it's called. Although I should say that they're not going to be entirely compatible because I do use the FM feature on the MS-101 slash MS-1 which the SH-101 doesn't have unless you've installed the mod that does have that. So the point of all this is to give you some creative ideas, to give you a launch pad, a starting point, a place to go when you're sitting there with your MS-1 slash MS-101 and you're not quite sure what to do next, try these out. And this is the, the extended full-on version of this video. If you're just interested in dialing in the patches really quickly, then do go and check out my heavily edited down to as small as I could possibly make it patch video, but that won't include all of the wonderful development and the talking and the ideas and the movement of these patches from one place to another. Because a patch is not set in stone, particularly on a device such as this, because it doesn't have any ability to store presets. So the current patch is whatever it is that's set up on the front, and it's always in flux, moving from one thing to another as you move sliders and press buttons and move things about. And so with all of the patches I've created for this video, I then spend a the time, five minutes, 10 minutes, moving it and developing it and showing where it could go, what it could do, what it could sound like for you in your music. So the idea is that you absolutely should definitely play and mess and move on from these patch ideas. I've recorded all the sounds directly from this with just a little bit of reverb just to give it some space. And in one patch in particular, I also use some delay, but otherwise it's just is as it is. And the sound that you're hearing is as real as authentic as it's gonna get. Because even if you don't have an MS-101 slash MS-1, this video should hopefully give you a really good understanding of what's possible with this little fella. So fire up your 101 and join me for a little bit of patching. So what we have to start with, I believe, is an initialized patch. And in it, uh, a starting point, a place where we actually get sound because if you've used one of these, you often find that when you first turn it on, you can't get any sound out like this because it's an analog synthesizer. All the controls on the front reflect exactly what's going on. And so if you've not got it set up right to make noise, it's not going to make noise. And your first play with your MS-101 or MS-1 could be one of frustration. So let's start with what I would like to call a basic beat. So pull all the sliders down, put everything down so we're into a, a vanilla situation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop along here. We're going to push up the sine wave, push up the frequency cutoff, and push up a tiny bit of decay. And there is our basic beep. Make the decay longer for a longer sound. Add some release if you wish. But there is our basic beat, our starting point. So at every point, come back to this before you create a new patch, just so that you know you have sound and it's ready to go. The most common reason why you're not getting any sound out of the 101 is because you have the cutoff all the way down. That's always the first port of call. The next one is the envelope. If you're not sure about the envelope, set the VCA to gate. And it bypasses the envelope altogether and just opens when you press a note. Now one rather nice little thing you can do with this very, very basic patch is a little bit of arcade action. Turn on the arpeggiator. Yeah. 
and you can throw in some arcade success. Galaxian, I find. Data overload. A little bit of modulation. Set it to random. Bring in the square wave, the sub, all the way down to two octaves. Put the frequency and resonance about in the middle, a little bit north of the middle. Bring all three of our filter modulators up a bit. Keyboard, envelope and modulation to about the middle. Put this on envelope. Put this on gate. Sustain all the way up. The other bits down. on how you like your data, you can push up the LFO a bit. Bring it down to lower octaves. And then start to play. If you want to add some thickness to the sound, bring in the pulse width modulation. Start bringing in some FM. And for a bit of extra rhythm, switch the envelope to LFO.
next up, Hollow Man. For this we're using a mix of the Sawtooth and the Pulse. Bit of sub in there. On the one octave down. Frequency nice and low. Mid-range resonance. Envelope all the way up. BCA on envelope. This on gate. And a small little envelope. Stick an arpeggiator in there. And then of course, the cutoff is your friend. FM introduces these little rhythms, which are just wonderful. Intravenous. Now this one actually came about through a discussion with DivKid talking about our favorite patches on all synths and this one is all about pushing the filter into self oscillation and using that as a counterpoint to the oscillator itself. Let me show you what I mean. So moving the range up to eight. Sawtooth. Frequency just above the middle, resonance all the way up. Envelope modulation down, keyboard all the way up. Envelope here, gate on the envelope, and just a little small bit of decay at the end. Now what happens is, is you can now tune in the filter, the self oscillating filter, to be offset with the sawtooth wave that's there. So what you do is simply adjust the cutoff frequency until you get the combination that you're after. Thank you. 
just the finest movements. Keyboard tracking needs to be all the way to the top so that it follows the entire octave of the keyboard correctly. Let's put it into ARP mode because that's just my favourite thing in the world. Also introduce a little bit of modulation to be changing that cutoff frequency about. sign, make it nice and slow. You can have it just pushing it slightly out of tune. something a bit lower 
pulse wave and sawtooth. Frequency starting off low, resonance somewhere in the middle, envelope all the way up, those two down. VCA to gate, envelope again, just giving us a little bit of delay. Okay. This brings in that kind of classic wetness, the squelch. Because you've got the note is purely opening a gate here on the VCA, the envelope is only affecting. It's only affecting the filter, which gives us that lovely. Squelch. Let's give it some of my ARP action. <laughs> I so enjoy uh, something like this. And then, of course, the filter is what it's all about. This one. Gurgle. That's just brilliant. 
That's lovely. Mysterious return. This one we're looking at something a little bit more legato, something a bit droney, something atmospheric. So for this, we're going to pump up our pulse and sawtooth. Put our noise up. Very underused noise. I don't always find much of a use for it, but this one I'm gonna have a bit of a play. Resonance up nice and high, cut off down, envelope all the way up. Keyboard up a little bit. VCA set to envelope, and then our envelope is gonna be in gate mode because we want to have some legato notes, and then we're gonna push all this lot up. Well, maybe bring it down in a little bit of places. Just give us some room to play. The range knob should be set to four. Now the envelope is going to dictate how that noise moves, so whether it goes in and out like a wave or like a, a wind push the sustain up, then it won't do that, it will, it will climb and then maintain. And then you can adjust the noise level to get it to your own taste. Gato runs in there before the filter re-triggers and acts upon the filter. Push the resonance up there a little bit more start to get a sense of that self-oscillation. It's also quite nice to bring in that sub. But the real kicker is when you bring in some pulse wave FM. So many tonal possibilities in that. Thank you. 
Plastic base. This is going to be a bit of a favourite, I think. Range all the way down for our bass sound. Bring out the sawtooth, bring down the sign. Bring our filter somewhere nicely in the middle. Bring the envelope up to about halfway. Bring the keyboard all the way up. Put the VCA into gate mode so that the envelope's only attacking the filter and keep the envelope in our usual sort of short, sharp and interesting place. And then what do we do? We play with the filter, of course. Stick in a little bit of an arp for something or other. It's interesting that when you're in a low range on the VCO, bringing in the sub doesn't do what you think it will. It doesn't sound any good. It's interesting. Random modulator. If you just want a bit of kind of weirdness going on. And you can then swap it for the envelope, take the envelope out. Intravenous territory again. Oh, 
Let's get our plastic base back just by bringing that resonance down a bit. There it comes. Pumping dread. This is an interesting one. It can fall apart really easily. And it's all about riding about on that envelope on the attack and the release in order to create these thumps that go on. So for this, we're going to be using the LFO. We want it at uh, mid-level speed. We'll play with that a bit in a minute. I'm going to set the range down to 16. I'm going to put a bit of pulse width in there. I'm going to go all the way up on the square, nearly all the way up on the sawtooth, about halfway up on the sub. Filter, quite closed. Resonance very low. Envelope most of the way up. Keyboard all the way up. VCA is going to be on gate mode. Envelope's going to be on LFO mode. Going to stick up the attack and the release. Just going to hold that note down and start playing with the envelope. Sounds better at one octave, this low. release. I don't quite understand it. It sort of flips.
poisonous brings in some interesting flavour, but I actually prefer it down the bottom. Okay, that's... Tic Tac. This is a, a furry, spiky, splatty sort of rhythmically interesting slap of a sound. It needs a really fast arpeggiator and then you just well, play with stuff like you do with everything. So with this, the range is at the bottom, although we're going to play it quite high. Stick up our pulse and sawtooth, bring down the sign. We're going to introduce a little bit of noise. Filter's quite high with a resonance somewhere in the middle, envelope all the way up. VCA should be on envelope mode, gate should be on gate and trigger. And then the envelope kind of needs to be all the way down until we get going. So stick the transpose up high, turn on the ARP and stick some notes in. There's that sort of ticky-tack sound that I'm after, but there's a whole load of stuff hiding behind this that you can start to use with a little bit of decay. A little bit of noise. Start pushing that decay. You can always come back to the tic tac. With or without the noise.
I like how that gives a kind of a Doppler effect as the filter goes through. Lastly, Tyrell's Tears. Hopefully that will become self-evident. Or maybe I'm just kidding myself, but I've tried to pull a pad out of this, which is not as easy as you'd think. But in order to do it, I'm also going to employ a little bit of delay from my Eurorack over here, from the Erica Synths Black Stereo delay. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's reset. So for this one, I want a little bit very slow modulation directed towards the oscillator. Just a little bit, not even one, just so that you hear it happening. Just going to use the sine wave. Put the sub in the middle. Frequency all the way up, resonance all the way down, these all the way down. Envelope mode on the VCA gate and trigger on the envelope and all of these pretty much all the way up as you like in order to create our, our pad effect. We're going to take the range of the VCO down but we're still going to play it quite high. Now with the LFO, we want that set to sine wave. So we should get a wobble. Okay, so far so good. Now if I introduce a bit of square wave FM, slightly more interesting. Also stick some glide into this one, just a little bit. If I add a little bit of delay to that, bit of sub.
then you can change the LFO depending on how you want it to sound. So there you go, what a remarkably diverse and versatile machine this surely is. I've thoroughly enjoyed putting all that together and I'll probably do some more. I'm certainly going to do some more patch videos on some other little synths and bits and pieces as well because it's enormously fun to do. And if you'd really just like to refer directly to the patches themselves then do check out the other video that I talked about which is a massively shortened version to give you like 30 seconds on each patch so you can just quickly pause YouTube and dial that in. Do go and check that out in the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Do please feel free to subscribe. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes.